Hey, good morning and welcome to the homestead. So, a little bit of a fun project today. We got a friend who owns this golf cart, brought, bought it down in Florida. Somebody converted it from 36 to 48 volts, I guess. Um, it's got some wiring issues, but what I really wanted to focus on today is lead acid batteries. So, this is applicable to solar equipment, solar systems. This isn't just a golf cart concern. Um, one of the things I always tell my customers is to keep their batteries clean. Because when you, when you let the acid and stuff build up on top of the battery and it gets dirty, it will conduct electricity across the battery. You'll get some parasitic drain on the battery due to that. And then the other thing I tell my customers is don't ever tap your battery for certain loads. And what I mean by that is like, let's say you put a 48 volt battery in your house and you put say a Snyder SW inverter, right? You got all that going, everything's working great. And you decide you're gonna buy a 12 volt whatever. I don't care what it is, 12 volt something. You're like, well, I'll just hook it across 12 volts of the battery, and I've got 12 volts. Well, the problem with that is you drain that one battery more than the others, and it never really gets full. So when the charger hooks up to these batteries, and it tries to bring them up to, say, 58 volts, it doesn't know what each individual battery is. It just sees the overall voltage. So if that one battery that you're dragging down with the 12-volt load, especially if the load is on while the charger's running, it will bring the other batteries up higher than that, and... Uh, so in this case, I've got a couple things I want to show you. One of them is that, so the radio in this was hooked up to a singular 8-volt battery. These are actually 8-volt batteries, a 6 in series to make 48 volts. The radio was hooked up to a singular 8-volt battery, which had several problems. One was every time you step on the throttle pedal, that battery dropped to like 8-ish volts and the radio would shut off. The other is this one battery never got fully charged. So when you look at these batteries, this one was a lot lower in voltage. We worked really hard over the last month in Florida to get that battery back up to try to match. So we're going to show you that. I want to, I want to show you the voltages of the battery and uh, we'll see if Sue can, let's see, we have a light. We'll see if that helps you. Um, see if you guys can see that voltage okay. So we'll see that this battery here is 8.12 and this battery beside it is 8.3. So you'll see it's, it's not terrible. That one's 8.2. So we did a pretty good job of getting it back close, right? Um, so that's that's good. These batteries are do have a little age on them. They don't appear to have a ton of cycles on them. They seem to have pretty good capacity. The other thing they did is they tapped those two batteries over there for 16 volts for all the lighting because obviously they were having problems with light staying on at eight volts. So you tapped them for 16 volts. Now the odd part about this cart is that they actually have, right down in here, a DC to DC converter. So that little box takes 48 volts in and puts out 12 volts. So all of the 12 volt loads, like the lighting and the radio, should have been hooked up to that. And then they would have come off a singular 48 volt battery and everything would have been, you know, shared. The other issue we have here is the batteries are really dirty. They got a lot of acid. They got a lot of stuff going on the top of them. You see how they look wet and, and dark? And then you can see how the terminals, like that battery cable right here is brand new. I put that on in Florida about six weeks ago. And you see all the corrosion? That's because the battery is just covered in acid. Now what I was talking about when I say that you can get leakage between terminals and stuff, Let's just pick a battery. So here's the start. This is the positive of the 48 volt and negative is way over there. So if I put my positive right here, I'm, I'm on the lead, right? Now let me go on the plastic. You see that voltage? I got like six point something volts. Let me go over here on the plastic. I got four volts. Now what happens if I go way over here to the last negative in the system? Check that out. I got 45 volts plastic to plastic. I'm not touching any metal or wire anywhere. So you're getting you're getting some leakage there and that needs to be cleaned up. That's one of the issues I see a lot with new um, new system owners with solar systems. They get a set of golf cart batteries. Golf cart batteries can be had, not Trojan particularly, but in general, golf cart batteries can be had at you know Sam's, Costco, that kind of place. Pretty affordable. You know, probably under $100 a battery. So that tends to be the go-to battery for most first-time solar installers. They don't want to spend the money on lithium or they don't want to spend the money on uh, big, nice, heavy-duty lead-acid batteries. 
and, and that's fine. They're a really good learning battery. I do think that everybody should have to use a cheap set of batteries for the first set because they will kill them before they learn how to take care of them. But that's one of the reasons I, I harp on clean, you know, cleanliness and cleaning. And that's one of the beauties of like these, you know, like these batteries over here, these kilovolts. Um, these things are a lithium iron phosphate. There's no acid. They're sealed. There's no maintenance. They just work and work and work, but they're expensive. So the, the batteries in that golf cart are probably under a hundred bucks a piece to buy new, even Trojan. Uh, we can get a drop-in lithium replacement through, I think it's rely on. We actually have some on the power shed running our solar system and they're about $1,200 a piece brand new. So you can see that like, now we wouldn't need as many in this golf cart. We may be able to get away with three or maybe even you know, four in this golf cart, but you can see where it would still cost a tremendous amount more money to do lithium than it does lead. So that's why people steer away from this. Like, like this is going to be a 300 amp hour, 24 volt battery to power that same length inverter. And you're looking at probably close to $4,000 for those batteries somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Um, you saw our camper video, the lithium we have in the camper, there's six batteries in there. We've got almost $6,000 in batteries in that. Whereas we could have put, you know, a handful of golf cart batteries in there and been in it for five or 600 bucks, but they'd be a lot more heavy and they would require maintenance. So there's a give and take to all solar batteries. And that's one of the things that you have to look at as a end user. Are you willing to do the, the give and the take? You know, what do you, what do you, what are you willing to do? And if you're not willing to do that work, then you may want to look into something more expensive that's maintenance free but if you're willing to do that work you can get away with the cheaper batteries long term i think it all evens out the lithium lasts so long that uh, you're going to go through several sets of lead but anyways that's kind of just a quick little video this morning i really wanted to show you that golf cart battery i really want to show you the voltage measured plastic to plastic and talk about you know unbalanced strings and and, and tapping batteries where you shouldn't tap them and just stuff like that and how it's applicable across the board you know you might think well why are we working on a golf cart why are we talking about a golf cart but it's basically a solar system right it's batteries it's a charger and it's something to drain the battery your inverter drains the battery your solar system charges the battery in this case it's a wall charger instead of solar panels but same idea so hopefully that was kind of interesting maybe a little useful anyhow i'm going to get to work tearing to this golf cart part and see if i can't make some progress on this and figure out what is going on with the radio. So we'll probably bring you back a little later when we get a little farther along on it. You can see what we got going on. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.